In this episode, I'm gonna show you how I took this image and I turned it into this. And in particular, we're gonna focus on something too that's a default that you need to overcome in virtual staging software when you have features like this wrought iron railing that when you place the couch, it'll put the couch through the railing. We know that's not where it's supposed to be. Instead, we're gonna fix that so that that wrought iron railing is where it should be, which is on the outside and the couch should be behind it. Let's get started. So starting out here in Photoshop, we can see the final image and we'll work our way back on what it took to make this. I started out here, I put everything in groups so that we can see what happened. Initially, I have this base image and this is good, this is deliverable, but the client wanted to have it virtually staged. Now, this is a lot better than if we had just tried to do ambient brackets. As you can see from just this one ambient shot, if we tried to do HDR for this, it would just be a mess. So instead, by incorporating the proper amount of flash, using the proper flambient blending technique, then I'm able to get this type of result. And by the way, if you're not familiar with this or some of the other steps I'm gonna show in editing that I'll brief over before we get into the root of the virtual staging, you might want to check out my courses on doing pro interior photography and editing. As you may know, I have courses on doing professional interior photography, expert editing. I also have a course on exterior photography and also videography as well. And of course, I've written best-selling books on real estate photography, and I have links to all that down in the description of this video. But moving along here, now that we've got this base image, this is what I would send up to have virtually staged into Apply Design. And that's what we can see here. It's applydesign.io. And you may know from other tutorials that I've put here on my YouTube channel, I really like using their software, and I'll show you why, one of the big reasons here in just a second. As you can see though, the couch as I'm placed over here is behind this pony wall, and why did I even bother putting that couch in there? That's because the rest of the house was virtually staged, as you can see from this image here showing the living room, and we don't really have to worry about anything in the office because of the angle and also the chair that's blocking that view into the office, but we needed to have some consistency, and the client wanted that as well. So now though, trying to place that couch here, there's nothing I can do that's going to place it on the other side of that little pony wall, that entrance railing with those wrought iron and even the, the handrail itself. It just isn't going in there. So what you do in this case is just leave it like that, do the rest of your virtual staging, and then render it. So after rendering it, I don't have to download a JPEG. That's one thing I really like about using Apply Design. In fact, these layers here were layers that were downloaded as PNGs. So I had here, there's the shadow, the layer that's down below here. And you can see I've also got a furniture layer. I'm able to do a lot of other editing to this. I show that in the expert editing course, by the way. But here, basically what I did was added a brightness contrast layer with a clipping mask so that I could add a little bit of oomph over here. This was just too bright. It wasn't realistic enough. And if this was too dull, I could add other adjustment layers on top of it. But what we're facing here, though, is this problem that we need to fix. And that is over here with those railings. So this is what I would do. First, we got the virtual staging in place. Everything looks good. We're just going to shut that off. So now we have just our image that we wanted to work with. So in here, what you would do is take your base image, the one that was blended. This was the flambient blended image. And right above here, I just have a hue saturation layer, which took out some of the magenta that was in the carpet down here that really wasn't the true color. So something that just happened during the editing process, tone that down. So anyways, with this though, what you would do is you would duplicate this layer. So I'll do that by selecting this layer and doing Control J. Now to keep things simple, I could shut off the hue saturation layer, but we'll just keep that on. Right now, that new layer, I'm gonna double click on the name and I'm gonna call it Railing. So we just keep track of that. Okay, now I wanna put a hide all layer mask on this. So I wanna hide everything. What I'm gonna do is go up to layer, then down to layer mask, and then to hide all. Now everything's hidden. If I were to shut off the layer below it, then you're not going to see anything. Now instead though, what we're going to do is temporarily take that base layer that we had, our finished blended, flambient blended image, and I'm gonna lower its opacity. And I'm gonna lower that down to about 50%. 
Now it's semi-transparent. I can see what we're gonna do on the next steps. So let's zoom in here to this railing so we can see what we're doing. What I wanna do is go to now the layer mask on our railing layer. And what I wanna do is grab the object selection tool, which is up here and select object selection tool. Now it's not gonna be able to really select this as an object. We're gonna to have to do that manually. So what you do is you would then draw using this in polygon lasso tool mode and it'll grab that. And you can set that up here by the mode being in lasso. And you can see that it did a good job just drawing a rough lasso around there. It selected that top railing. Now on this mask, press Alt Delete. Now you can see that's coming through. You can do Control D to deselect. We're gonna do that to the rest of these too. You can get really rough going around, for instance, this big railing. When you release, it'll close, select it, and then on the mask, do Alt Delete. You'll do this then for the rest of the railing, so to save some time, let me speed this up. Okay, so now that I have all that selected, we're ready to finish off this edit. The rest of this is very simple. I'm gonna zoom all the way out here to fit everything in there, and I'm gonna turn back on now the full opacity of our bottom layer, which we set to 50% only so that we can see what we're doing when we're editing. I'm gonna change that opacity back to 100%. You can see it's set to 100% here. I just used keyboard shortcuts to make that happen. Now what you wanna do is take that railing layer that you worked with, and you wanna move that all the way up to the very top, at least over top of where your virtual staging is. And of course, I've got another one that I worked on here earlier, but we'll just leave it there at the very top. Now when you turn on your virtual staging, you'll see that that railing now is on the outside of it because that's the layer that we just created. Now by using a mask on this, we're allowed to now add anything we want. So I could completely add the entire thing over top of it, but that allows me then to go in very close. And here where some of these little areas may be missed, then I can still add those. So let's zoom here at 100% so we can see what it looks like. It's definitely noticeable, so we'll go in a little closer. We'll take the polygon lasso tool up here. And for instance here, we can get in really close and just draw a little bit of a polygon here, down there maybe, up to there. And then if I did Alt Delete on that layer, then that comes in. So I could do that to these others here. In fact, that's what I did when I did this other railing group here. So in this group here, what I did was I have the exact same railing layer that I made by doing those selections, but I also added a couple things in here to make it a little bit better. I added a black layer on top of here, just a simple fill layer, and I filled some of those areas in. That's what this is here. If I shut that off and on, you can see the differences. Let's go in here a little bit closer. You can see even better, especially on these railings, if I turn that off and turn that on. So this is one reason why this is also grouped. I like to group things. My virtual staging, that was grouped here where I've got my shadow layer and furniture layer and also my adjustment layers there in there. And then my special edits, I've keep those in another group as well that I can just turn off and I can turn on. Same with my base image so I can see what I'm doing by turning that off and then back on again. But the trick here though, and the root of this, is being able to take what was on the other side of that couch, making a mask selection of that, and then placing it above in front of where we did our virtual staging. Now I realize, yes, this did take a good amount of effort, but when you're doing virtual staging and you're also doing custom edits, this is something to identify with your client when you see this and you're talking about doing virtual staging for them to be able to identify that this would be a problem because of this problem area. But you can fix that, of course, for a cost. So you do charge for these special items. And then when you do, then you're compensated well for it. You also show that you're an expert when it comes to to doing not just photography and not just editing, but also virtual staging as well.